Insurance companies like banks have been facing severe headwinds over the last few years. The financial crisis, low interest rates, increasing regulation and more demanding and digital customers. Whereas other sectors have successfully adjusted their business models and embraced digital transformation, insurers have been slower to adopt. While CEOs use buzzwords such as customer-centric, digital and capital light, the largest part of their transformation journey is still ahead of them. That's according to my guest today, Stefan Binder, head of the European insurance practice at the global management consultancy McKinsey. Let's meet him. I'm Angela Corp. Welcome to The Business Debate. Stefan, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thanks for having me, Angela. Now, insurance companies have historically enjoyed very stable growth and profits, but that's changed over the last few years, hasn't it? It has indeed. Um, insurance companies have really been icons of stability in the past, but they're faced now with some tectonic shifts driven by changing regulation, by very low interest rates, by technology developments. And they find it hard to adapt to these kind of changes in environments. So take, for example, another tectonic shift we saw over the last 10, 15 years of growth moving to Asia. Everyone saw it coming, many have tried and very few have succeeded. Why do insurance companies find change so much more difficult than other industries? Well, first of all, stability is a good thing um, from a customer perspective. If you buy insurance, you really want to make sure the company is still around when you need it, which in the case of life insurance could be decades later. Um, but also they make a lot of their money based on policies they've sold in the past, so they see much less pressure from changes in new business. So what does that mean for the workforce and insurance? Artificial intelligence and bots mean that a lot of these tasks are going to be automated, aren't they? Yes, indeed. So we predict that 40% of the jobs today in the insurance industry won't exist anymore in 10 years. But at the same time, there will be 10 or 20% new jobs created that we don't have today. So managing this massive change Building new skills and managing the cultural change is one of the preeminent tasks of insurance CEOs for the next decade. And what's the time scale for this change? I mean, it obviously needs to happen soon, but we're talking about tens of thousands of jobs here. Yes, we believe there will be more change over the next 10 years than we've seen over the last 100. So insurers are really facing a lot of changes in many areas. For example, they are a bit behind on the digital transformation curve as compared to more consumer-facing industries. In motor insurance, we have car manufacturing, collecting a lot of data coming out of cars. In life and health insurance, they are faced with a rapidly aging population. So there's no upside in waiting it out, right? The winners of tomorrow are really going to be the ones that are starting now. So where does McKinsey come in? What are you doing to help insurers? Now, we are really agents of change. So historically, we focused a lot on strategy. But today, mostly we partner with our clients and help them accelerate and drive change. For example, they invest a ton in technology but we haven't really seen cost go down or consumer experience being rapidly better. So we help design programs that capture the return for them. Tell me a bit more about how you drive that change across tens of thousands of employees. Yes, and that we believe is really the million dollar question. Um, based on our experience, there's three very important steps. It starts with a good diagnostic. We have a lot of tools that help companies build a fact base on where change needs to happen, depending on their starting point and depending on their strategy and more importantly, build a conviction in the organization for th this change. Secondly, we have a lot of um, tools and approaches on how to design this kind of change programs, where to start um, and how to drive them. And then thirdly is really the question of how to make it sustainable. So we actually spend a lot of our time now in helping our clients build new skills. We have a McKinsey Academy that uh, teaches thousands and thousands of employees in online and offline learning course courses. Insurance often doesn't have the new skills you're talking about. They're the old guard, if you like, but millennials don't really want to work in insurance. What's the solution? Yes, so I think it's fair to say that insurance companies are not a natural talent magnet, and especially for young people and technology-savvy people. But you know, it really starts with a strategy trying to understand where do we really need to be better than others and investing there. And then it comes to changing the way insurance companies operate. So a lot of companies have now adopted a more agile way of working, mimicking startups, really radically shortening decision-making uh, cycles and breaking through traditional silos. And they're really embracing technology. Um, they're changing the layout of their offices. So a lot of insurance companies look more like a Google today than an insurance company. You mentioned earlier that uh, insurance companies missed out on that tectonic shift to Asia. This sounds very much like another tectonic shift. Are they going to get it right this time? Well, I think some will, um, but not all. It really requires a lot of decisive leadership and, and large ambitions. 
Um, there has been a lot of talk about uh, insurtechs and technology companies like Google disrupting and taking over the insurance industry. I actually don't think that's going to happen. I think the biggest challenge for an insurance company today is a competitor that starts earlier and moves faster. Stefan, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. And join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in healthcare and foreign direct investment. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.